I don't mind sharing with you the irony that despite my awareness na ka mga babaan sa amon mag-ulutod, nagtinod na kami when the matter of delivering a eulogy for Tatay came to the fore. Uh, Masegwe lang ko. Okay, this is uh, one of the most uh, frequently asked questions. Is aka offensive sa akun na akong ginambal na kamagulangan. For the record, ni si Macho, kamagulangan, ang dason, si Chati, ang third, ako fourth, si Calvin, ang ning youngest. Perhaps it's because of the inherent difficulty, even impossibility, of choosing what to say from our individual memory banks, which we may regard as significant. So, um, sa kadamo sang madumduman namin through all the years of our relationships, individual relationships. In my attempt to relay some vignettes of stories, of moments and seasons shared with Tatay, others quite inevitably are excluded. Maybe it's because of the threat that all these talks would uh, also just degenerate into an exchange of sub-stories. And then people would have the impression that we're inconsolable or worse, that assurance of salvation is something exotic to our ears. Far from it, we feel indebted to each one of you for your presence and other expressions of sympathy and also for orchestrating the wake and then this final farewell for Tatay. We also know that God holds him in the hollow of his hand, something all of us yearn for ultimately. Hindi nyo lang po galing pag itiklot ka ron sa lulugnan kung magchabaw gitman ko. So let me start off with a bit of fact about Tatay. He was born on July 5, 1939, uh, flashed in the screen sang kagina pa or kagapon pa. He was born to a uh, young couple who was to have 10 children, as uh, already said by uh, Tito Fred. And, and uh, they were raised in fabrica. That's as simple a fact as may be recalled of a simple and modest man. But, but you don't measure the life of a man by simple facts, simply told. Rather, it's been said that you measure it in the truths that he learned, or in the times he cried, in the bridges he burned, or the way that he died. There are more truths, many truths, that Tate learned in all his 71 years, the most important of which is that Christ is the way, the ultimate truth, and the life. There are a couple of times I know when Tatay was heartbroken that he cried hard. One was when my nanay died. The other was when he learned of a particularly debilitating illness I suffered, such that he thought I would die ahead of me. As an aside, before I left Manila, I was consoled a bit by my boss at the Court of Appeal saying that it is the natural order of things that parents die ahead of their children. I don't know. I don't know Tatay to have ever burned bridges, except that in 2000 he forswore smoking, a habit he learned since 16 or 14, according to Chapi. As to the way he he died, Tatay pretty much knew when he wanted to make his exit. As much as he loved receiving letters from afar, Tatay also loved to write, often with a knack for humor and drama. I unearthed 
the following from one of those speeches he delivered as a toastmaster. He wrote, I, was, I, I have fine memories of Fabrica when I was a boy. This is where I was born and where I finished high school. I am fourth among ten children. In those days, family planning was unheard of, and my mom, who got married at 14, brought, brought forth into the world ten children in a span of 20 years. At least the main two years gap sila. I am my father's namesake, Cipriano Jr. And it took me many years to forgive him for naming me after him. <laughs> because my parents couldn't send all of us to college without tremendous burden on their part, I worked my way to college in Manila. I remember my mom shed tears when I bade her goodbye at the bus terminal in Fabrica. Maybe she thought I couldn't live by myself. But survive I did in Manila. Four pesos a day in 1961 was enough for me to get by. I attended night classes at Far Eastern University, taking 12 units a semester, such that a four course in business took me six. Although accounting was my major subject, I excelled in English, Spanish, and poetry. My first break came in 1965 when I passed an employment exam by a multinational oil firm. I got married. Loving and living was easy. And we didn't care to save enough for the future. My first setback came in 1983. Economic reversals forced the company to stop its Philippine operations. I was caught flat-footed, three children in college and two in secondary. A state of uncertainty. Should a child stop schooling? Which child? How will I explain it? I was restless and couldn't sleep. I turned to God, something I've never done for a long, long time. I lifted my hands towards heaven, pleaded my case, and practically stormed heaven with my supplications day and night. I realized that in times of sufficiency and abundance, I had no time for him. I sought pardon. Call it luck or coincidence, but I call it providence. A friend, VP of an overseas employment company, called to ask me, if I was interested to work in an oil drilling in Africa. It's a risky job, he said, but the pay is the prettiest you can ever earn. So off I went to Africa. Yes, it was a good paying job, but a lonely job on the high seas. For the next 14 years, this was to be my milieu, my environment. Family relations suffered. I dreaded the day when my children will outgrow their need of me. And what about my marriage, now punctuated by long absences? Tragedy, tragedy struck in 1987 with the death of my wife. Lung cancer. It was the most distressing, intense, and excruciating pain experience. But now, I knew where to go. I asked for strength and perseverance to accept things I cannot change, just as he helped me before. Time has a way of healing our wounds. Nature has provided for that. By 1990, all my children have finished their college dreams. I thank the Lord for giving me the endurance, working a risky and lowly job for my children's sake. In 1997, 10 years after my wife has gone, I found love again. I found my sweetie pie, who is 11 years younger than I am. And little did I know that she too was from my hometown, Fabrica a barrio that has become personal to me. To all merry widows 
and reluctant with the worst. Believe me when I say this, love is lovelier the second time around. <laughs> End of quote. At um, improv to na lang ni, pero naging sabat ni siya si ni Mama Esa video na na how can you say second time around it's just my first <laughs> but anyway that's that eh. um but i fancied himself with the thought that i inherited my love for animals from his side of the gene pool he wrote the simple the simple um, eulogy for our pet who died two years ago. <laughs> our canine friend Brown died in his sleep last night. Melancholy. He wasn't eating the past three days and was consistently losing weight days before. He was 84. None of his dozen children scattered around the neighborhood at attended his burial. He was poor. In an interview, while he was still up and about, he said that it wouldn't matter if he dies poor. What matters, he said, was to live poor. He longed to see his master, a lawyer, to bid goodbye, but couldn't afford a, a payphone or move his paws to dial numbers. Tatay was a gentle soul to his three grandchildren, but was particularly fond of Abby. Hi, Abby. Mainly because of spatial proximity. He loved to dance, although singing was more his cup of tea. Sinatra was his favorite in that department but he frequently revisited church hymns he used to sing as a boy and, the, and then more Christian contemporary songs. Me and Tatay did not get along fine while I was growing up. I was closer to my mom and secretly wished back then that Tatay would go ahead of her, <laughs> unaware that 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 scenario could have had dashed all our hopes of going to college. I was foolish, really. I was a stubborn and difficult child whose orientation that I felt would bring me to damnation. He thought I was not street smart enough and somehow taught me the value of hard-earned money. I became more frugal than my old man. Sang makadto ko sa Manila to look for my first job, his instructions regarding my stay at his sister's house was specific. I felt it was even ridiculous. Ambalya. Kung ato kato kay Inday, mabulig ka sa balay. Kagkong ara sa mesa, hindi mo pagpiliun ang tanan nga unod kag ibilin ang utan ha. At that time, hindi na siya, hindi niya ko gusto mag-eroplano pagani pagkatuto when travel by boat was a lot cheaper. Binsabat ko siya galing. Te nga ikaw kung magbuli ka diri sa Bacolod pero ka man gani ga, pero ka man gani ga eroplano. Kadlaw lang siya. Tatay always had this innate sense of humor. Simple lang na siya kis uh, magtugda sa kaladlawan. Sometimes plain funny sometimes mischievous, and at other times sarcastic. After being incommunicado for a long time, while in, long, long while in 1995, I decided to pursue law and went home from Manila. He welcomed me with a hug and a firm handshake at the gate. Api ko do katatsing na gitno, do prodigal son. And then asked, siya na makotsa dahil sa Nga puli ka man tin, tigulutong to sa Manila. <laughs> Kidugay na ko. Why, why, why ko ka communicate sa iyo? <laughs> um, when I told him nga gusto ko mag-eskwela, liwat, his reaction was more like a challenge to me. Maloka! Doon di ka man angayan. In the end, he was proud that I made it to the bar and nahuya ko nga gina-introduce niya kung git ko permi 
as his lawyer's son. Tatay was a homebody who never seemed to lack of crafts and hobbies to busy himself with while at Puente Bella. He liked to watch boxing even before it became synonymous with Pacquiao. He was into cooking, carpentry, plumbing, electric connectivity, painting, uh, painting the walls, as well as gardening, which he loved most. He would kid us often that the produce or the sweet fruits we'd have for dessert came from his farm. Right now, it's difficult to stay in the house that we had lived in for the past 28 years without being reminded of Tatay at every turn. There is a profound and fundamental truth to what has been repeatedly preached these past few days that will all be reunited one sweet day in the beyond in that beautiful shore and will have bodies invulnerable to cancer and other maladies until that day comes however living without tatay around may have to take a lot of getting used to we have to accept that tatay is no longer a text or phone call away i wish to reiterate in behalf of the family our deepest thanks to all of you for the love and friendship you have shared with Tatay. Kag sa moral support nga ginahatag ninyo tanan. Bye-bye, Tay. But see you sooner or later.